Hey guys, how you doing? It's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been probably like too long. Uh, I've got a variety of things that I had on the go. Most have settled down now. <laughs> I guess we'll see. You know what? I'm going to check. I just make sure. They also tore everything apart and put it back together. So just make sure it's all working. Let's see. Oh, it is working. Look at that. Good for me. Um, so let's see. Uh, not really. I guess in some respects redesigned. Like, well, here, let me show you. Well, that. Oh, I want that one. Let's try that one. Okay, so <laughs> new, new desktop. So you can kind of see the new desktop here. It's actually natural wood. And I haven't finished it at all. I don't plan on finishing it at all because it, it feels nice and soft. Uh, and also that, that aroma, that natural wood is always so cool. So we've got that. Another monitor over there. So there's another monitor over there. And you really can't see too well because of the lighting and stuff. But this is the, the streaming software, OBS. Oh, goodness, can't remember what the acronym stands for. Anyway, so <laughs> that's the software over there. And the actual monitor that I'm watching myself on is right there. And of course, this is the camera that when I switch to main cameras. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, this is kind of the biggest thing. It worked out really well. I really quite like it. Yeah, so that's what I did. So in order to do that, I had to tear everything apart and plug it all back in again. But I think it uh, everything seems... Everything seems to be working. Hey, hooray for me. Okay, without further ado, creative versus passive observation. Um, I'm going to use passive. It's not my favorite word to describe this, but it, it works, actually. You could almost go um, uh, reactive versus proactive observation as well. But again, the labels don't really matter. It's the experience. So let's go to Mr. Flipchart. Well... I did not expect, God, didn't expect that to happen, that's for sure. I'm just going to freestyle for a bit. It looks like Mr. Flipchart is deciding not to work. Anyway, passive versus creative observation. There's, uh, there's your external world, uh, the world of your five senses that provides stimulus to you, your I am. Then there is the your internal world or what i call non-physical world so your external world five senses feed stimulus to you your i am right then here's your non-physical world or in that circle it disappeared <laughs> which are your thoughts and memories and belief systems and all that kind of stuff and that is internal in that you you can't see it right the external that's right here uh, the internal you can't see now the external is the aspect of this present moment, right? That you have the least control over. We've all experienced that, especially in the last couple of years. Your internal world, although it doesn't feel that way often, <laughs> is where you have complete control. Uh, I mean, sometimes it sure doesn't feel that way. For the purposes of this, passive observation is here comes the stimulus. It goes through your non-physical world. Now in your non-physical world, or that aspect of this present moment, is where belief systems or rules or filters or truths, you can say, uh, live. So this stimulus has got to go through that before it gets to you. So in a way, if you're sitting in your vehicle and you're looking out through the windshield, so here's all this information, right? All this, the world out here, it, it comes through, like you see it through the windshield. Now, if your windshield is, is dirty or muddy, then you're not gonna see clearly what's out there. And there's actually a barely accurate way of understanding this, is that the external world, the world of your five senses, has, you, you're watching it through the windshield of your car. And if the windshield of your car is crystal clear, then you see everything that's going on very accurately. But it's not, because on that windshield 
are these things called belief systems again truths whatever whatever words you you wish to use i'm just going to make sure everything's doing what it's doing yep yeah. so that part's working it's just mr flip chart that died um it, it has to come through there but that's where all these belief systems or truths are so think of the windshield if it gets muddy yeah you're still seeing the outside world but you're not seeing it clearly you're not seeing it like it, if, it, if it was a big hunk of mud right you're not even seeing that piece of it so what we call reality Reality is not the external, the five senses. Reality is the experience that we receive after it's came through the windshield. And because the windshield isn't crystal clear, we're not receiving an accurate representation of what's really out there. Okay, so here's what happens. Here's the stimulus. It flows through these rules, filters, belief systems, all these labels that you use, truths. And that's the information that we're, that flavors this stimulus. The stimulus is just a stimulus. Sometimes it's pleasant, sometimes it's unpleasant, but it's just stimulus. What really flavors it, what gives it meaning is the windshield, is these belief systems that is flowing through. Now, if a belief system serves you, good stuff. But what about the ones that don't serve you? Now, when it's passive observation, here's the stimulus comes through the windshield. The windshield, those stories, those belief systems really define the meaning or create in many ways the experience that your I am is experiencing. Again, if it's a belief system that serves you, perfect. But if it's one that doesn't, then what you're really experiencing isn't what's really out there. You're experiencing the story or the meaning that's attached to what's out there, that's on the windshield, that's what you experience. So in a very accurate way, it puts you in that victim role. Well, I'll call it passive, I guess, for lack of a better word, because whatever this is, that's what you see. Now, creative is understanding that Here's the stimulus, and these still may be the stories, right, that, we are, that are being presented to you, but we understand that sometimes those stories or those belief systems are, are number one, not giving us an accurate representation of everything that's out there, and is probably flavoring it or coloring it to create an experience that doesn't serve you. Now, here's, here's the thing. You have a choice. You can choose, I'm going to use the word passively, to just receive whatever stories your belief system is telling you, whatever meaning, however it chooses to frame the stimulus. You can choose to receive that. It is what it is, and away you go. So you can, you can use that. Or, and this is the game changer, or you can create the meaning to the stimulus that's coming through the windshield. See, this is what we've forgotten. We've forgotten that we have the power that if we don't like the meaning, the story, the framing that this is giving us, this windshield, right, is giving us, if we don't like that, we can choose to tell a different story. Because the stories, the meanings, the, the, the again, the framing of it, that. Your, your belief systems tell you, you can do the same thing. So if you don't like the story that your belief system is telling you about your external, external stimulus, knowing that it's flavoring, skewing, coloring what you're seeing there, so you're not really getting an accurate representation of what's out there anyway. What if the story that your belief system or systems are telling you, <coughs> excuse me, that Nothing's working, things are going bad, life is over, all that kind of stuff. That's just a story. And, and because they're filtering it, you're going you're gonna to receive all the stimulus out here that validates that story. But you're only going to receive or experience the stimulus that validates that story. This is one of the things that belief systems do. They will take any stimulus that aligns with the story that they're telling, and it just flows straight through. And more importantly, 
They'll take any, st oh, my brow chakra is just rocking. They'll take any stimulus that doesn't align with that and actually filter it out. You, your I am that's receiving, you're sitting in a vehicle looking through the windshield, you don't even see it. So then we go, well, if I don't see it, it must not be there. And that's when we slip into passive. Creative is just because I don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Oh, I have my one. Oh, well, thank you. This is a conscious area for my post today speaks exactly to this. Just not so well explained. Oh, well. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Um, uh, post, um, Post a link, anything you want, anything you want to apply. So you send a post, share your post uh, in this comment. You should be able to share it in a comment. Just find the link to it and then paste it in here because that'd be good, that's perfect. Um, and so then you can tell a different story. Now, now here's the thing. In the beginning, and not just in the beginning, because these belief systems are persistent bastards. They're not always bastards. They just, it's just the one, we just don't know how to manage them effectively and change them, mention them. Is you're going to tell a story that's actually contradicting the story that's here. So you got this going on, right? This is your belief system saying wah, 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 wah. And then this is you going wah, wah, wah. And they're not going to do this. I mean, sometimes they do, but that's not creative. Creative is, I don't like this, so I'm going to tell a different one. Now, initially, this is what's going to happen, right? They're going to collide, and there's going to be a little bit of Armageddon going on because this flow is just flowing really nice if you're passively just receiving whatever, and they're going, no, I'm going to tell a different story, and this is where visualization is so powerful. This is why in the second step of our manifesting process, living your desire on the inside is so powerful. Because what you need to do is you're going to have to battle this, right? Because that windshield doesn't clean very easily. So you're going to have to battle that. And you're going to have to be persistent. And you're going to have to be consistent. And you're going to, you know, there'll be days when you're, yeah, rock and roll and days when you're dragging your ass on the carpet. Okay, fine. But it's up to you to decide, do I want to passively just receive all this? Or do I want to change it? And the first step in changing the stimulus out here is not trying to change the stimulus out here. It's changing the belief system that's filtering and skewing the stimulus. That's what you got to change first. Because if that windshield is dirty, until you clean it, you're never going to see a clear picture of what's out there. I think this is the number one thing I learned this was fortunate enough to learn this early on that the power to change and this is I know it sounds corny because you hear it all the time but it's true the power to change your external world resides in your internal world because you're not even really changing your external external world so much we could go way off into a really cool discussion on that but I won't for our purposes here uh Wayne Dyer is what I heard it from first. I don't know who, who he heard it from, but when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I think this is one of the really, you, you got to kind of, takes a while to wrap your head around it in that I'm not trying to change out here, but I want to change out here. Yes, but you don't do that by trying to change what's out here. The first step is to clean the windshield. Joe Vitale called it clearing. Uses the white, use the whiteboard, and you draw all these belief systems on it. And then he talks about clearing if you erase the belief system, right? You clean the windshield because when you clean the windshield, all of a sudden, all this stimulus that you never saw before, now you see. And if you see something, no, and when you see something different, you're just going to naturally gravitate towards it. I. I haven't used this for quite a while. It was because uh, I haven't taught for forever. Um, if the only tool you're aware that you have is a screwdriver, you're going to try and use it to pump up a tire. It's not going to work worth a damn. But if that's the only tool you have, that's what you're going to use. And that kind of fits. Because all of a sudden, you're going to start to see tools, opportunities. Um, oh, what does Esther Hicks say? 
cooperating components, I think people will all of a sudden they'll start to show up because when you see them, they see you. So all of a sudden these opportunities, these options that you never had before, the solutions that were never there before, that were always there, they were just being filtered out by the dirty windshield. Clean the windshield, all of a sudden you see all this stuff and go, oh, wow, uh, like why didn't I think about that? Why didn't, oh, I should have done that before. Have you ever had that happen? You're searching and searching and searching and searching for an answer and all of a sudden it pops right into your head or you see it out here and you go, oh, why didn't I think of that in the first place? This is so effortless. This is so efficient. It just flows, right? Why didn't you see it in the first place? Because it was being blocked. If the only tool you're where you have is a screwdriver, you're going to try and use it to pump up a tire. But when you clean that windshield, all of a sudden you'll go, oh, look, there's a neck compressor. Now, you don't think you're going to use the air compressor to pump up a tire? Of course you are. It's always the first step. In many respects, it's the only, in many respects, it's the only step because the rest will start to then fall into the place, fall into place, creating or opening up the path of least resistance, which again is topic for another discussion. Thanks for tuning in. Mr. Flipchart decided to crap out today, the dirty dog. Um, <laughs> and uh, share, share, share. We're all in this together. It seems like everything, I had a light go down, but it hasn't really affected anything. Where's the bright light there? Yeah. Uh, so cool. All right. See you on the web.